Hello everyone. Uh, today's lecture is on uh, phase matching in uh, nonlinear K2 crystals. So nonlinear crystals uh, uh, exhibit several optical properties such as uh, double or fraction, uh, as in the case of uh, by refringent uh, media and polarization of nonlinear optics. So suppose we have uh, a K2 uh, uh, material or a crystal and uh, we have a pump at frequency omega and uh, uh, expected outputs are at omega and uh, to omega which is what we call second harmonic generation and the associated um, field is or electric field is are, uh, E at omega and uh, electric field are to omega and the polarization is defined or the usual definition for polarization is the sum of the linear polarization and uh, that of the nonlinear polarization, which are defined each of these as the linear polarization is epsilon naught uh, k1 times the electric field. I have written the electric field this year in their scalar uh, denotations. We don't have, uh, I mean, I, I don't want to struggle with the vector uh, denotations. Okay, I just wanted to. Uh, have neat expressions though their meaning is same okay so epsilon naught chi 1 e is the linear uh, component of the polarization and uh, epsilon naught chi 2 e squared is the nonlinear and we will deal on this nonlinear for the on this lecture okay And in any uh, electric uh, field books like uh, an antenna theory and electrical engineering and uh, uh, optics and photonics courses, you will have uh, uh, chi2 is equal to 2D as a convention and uh, we will just use 2D in this in this lecture too. So we have uh, the nonlinear polarization is equal to 2D which is chi2 times epsilon naught E where E is the sum of uh, the electric field is associated to the output at uh, omega frequency and uh, two omega frequencies and uh, we can so the, the electric field is are real so we have uh, E1 e to the j k1 z minus omega t plus it is complex conjugate and e to e j k2 z minus 2 omega t plus complex conjugate and i have just used one complex conjugate for both and we square this and because we have uh, over two when we when we uh, rewrite uh, such exponents in real form that is one over two uh, the field expression plus it is complex conjugate yeah so 1 over 2 square is 1 over 4 yeah and we have these two so we have 1 over 2 as quotient here okay I hope this is clear for all of you viewers okay and what I need is the the one at omega 2 okay and that means from this when we scare this the one in red ink here will generate as omega at two omega um, frequency at two omega but the rest is at four omega or at omega okay and this is what i need for this lecture okay so i don't want to compute the rest now let us see the nonlinear Maxwell's equations so that uh, their solution when solving this nonlinear Maxwell's equation 
I will find the second harmonic uh, generation of the uh, nonlinear Kaitu crystal. Okay, so as you know, uh, these are uh, the well known Maxwell's equations, but I just considered here for the nonlinear uh, Maxwell's equation as d is equal to the electric constant times electric field plus uh, polarization and the polarization is this polarization and applying uh, curl on both sides of the first expression that is on uh, curl of e is equal to uh, rate of change of magnitude density so the, the left hand side is this one and on the right hand side we will apply curl on this negative uh, del by del t of b and we know b is mu naught times uh, h and when we uh, and curl we don't know curl is i mean uh, mu naught is just constant and i can just extract it out as you can see it here and then curl of b is just mu naught times curl of uh, h and we know curl of h is del by del t of b or it is uh, the time rate of change of uh, electric field density all right that is what you can see here and i can just replace d or the electric field density by epsilon times electric field uh, plus uh, polarization and so you will have this expression and the simplified expression will be this one all right okay then uh, let's now solve this expression that is uh, okay so this is the expression of the electric field r to omega and this is the polarization at omega just we just found it a few minutes ago well so this is the nonlinear uh, maxwell's i mean nonlinear wave equation okay and uh, this is what we want to solve <coughs> sorry now let's find the expression for each of these but before that, we just consider the uh, uh, divergence of electric field is zero because the nonlinear materials are expected to be charge free. Okay. So this is zero. So the expression will be this one. Just we just plus plus and then plus now let's find the expression for del square e and then this one then this one separately and then we will combine them and simplify the expression okay that is how we should go so del square e all right e is here so we are asked to find del square e and this means by definition it is um, you know the del operator that is del by del x or second derivative with respect to x second derivative with respect to y second derivative with respect to z but as you can see our e or the electric field uh, we have at hand depends on only on z okay so it is like uh, finding second derivative with respect to d i mean with respect z so by definition second derivative is uh, applying first derivative twice so we have this uh, second uh, first derivative then fr apply first derivative on this so that means we apply first derivative on this then then multiply it by this we can see here plus first derivative on this exponential expression that is e to the power of j k2z minus 2 omega t times this 
e2 so we have it here and then we repeat with uh, uh, the same operation with this del by del v so del by del v of del by del v e2 that is del square by del v square e2 then times this expression then multiply so the derivative of uh, this exponent with respect to v times this del by del v of e2 and then plus here so the derivative of e2 and then for the derivative of this exponent which is j k2 and we have j k2 here that j square k2 square so j square is minus so this is minus now we can rewrite this long expression in a compact form by just extracting out this exponential uh, term and uh, the complex conjugate and we only have the coefficient terms here and now we just consider that uh, for just most of the time the second derivative is much much smaller than uh, the first derivative and so we can just ignore or neglect this and we can approximate the del square e by this expression okay now let us find uh, or let's find the expression for this term okay so here we just assume e2 is special dependent but it is independent of uh, time or it is temporal independent so the uh, this del square by del t square is just it has to operate on this exponential term only hence we will have when we apply uh, uh, the first derivative with respect t we have minus j to omega this one All right and then we just compute this and we will have minus j to omega also so we will have minus for omega square all right yeah then we can rewrite this as the minus will have to come first here and therefore outside of this uh, parenthesis and then we insert uh, this epsilon times mu naught into the parenthesis then omega square well then we can rewrite the uh, permittivity as uh, uh, relative permittivity times permittivity of uh, free space hence we have uh, epsilon not mu naught which is 1 over c squared or 1 over uh, speed of light and omega square over speed of light squared is k naught uh, squared and uh, the relative permittivity is a refractive index squared so we will have simplified expression here yeah. now let's simplify this expression now uh, this one okay so similar uh, to what we saw here in this case also we have uh, a second derivative of time okay so when applying it on this expression so what we have is just uh, minus 4 omega square yeah okay then having this let's plug these uh, three expressions into this equation uh, a wave equation then uh, in a linear wave Question actually, then find uh, the expression for 
E2. And then it's the uh, efficiency. Yeah. So this is the question or the nonlinear wave equation and the expression for del square E is this one and for epsilon uh, mu naught second derivative uh, with respect to time of E yeah now just plug these three equations expressions into this equation and then um, So as you can see, we have uh, this expression and uh, this because we can rewrite this as I think I have written it here. Yeah. So k2 is 2 omega over c n2. Then when we square k2 because we have it in square term, we have 4 k not square n2 squared, and we have it here okay and both are negative so we can cancel these two so and we have one over two on three terms we can cancel that too so simplified expression is this one okay so we have this simplified uh, expression and we have this minus 2 omega exponent actually e is the power of minus j 2 omega t on both sides of the equation and we can cancel it out yeah okay and we can rewrite or we can divide both sides of this equation by j 2 k 2 mm -hmm. and we have it here and because we have minus e and uh, when we multiply both sides of the new equation by j so we would have uh, minus here and uh, minus minus cancels out and we will have j and we have this difference and this difference is what we call phase mismatch all right Okay. Now we can integrate this expression so that uh, we will have E2 or to just complete the solution of the output electric field we just integrate both sides of this equation with respect to V and that is what we see here and here electric field at uh, z is equal to zero or uh, at the input to the nonlinear material is zero because we don't have output there okay and the integration of this is very simple because it is exponent yeah then just to evaluate it between zero and two on two uh, on zero and z yeah Yeah, here I just took uh, e is the power of minus j delta kv over 2 as a common and when we divide it uh, or we just multiply this and it becomes this one and because here it is positive so the their product becomes one yeah so this is the almost final expression yeah so this is the final expression for the electric field or the output electric field now let's define the efficiency because efficiency and uh, phase matching are uh, related terms like the inference matching in uh, uh, any circuitry uh, uh, inference matching is important to have maximum power transfer yeah and uh, in this case also we we need uh, phase matching so that uh, 
we will have maximum power transfer from the input to the output of uh, the nonlinear crystal. So we have to define uh, or we have to determine the efficiency of uh, uh, such uh, material. So this is the expression for the efficiency and as you can see it is dependent on the phase mismatch and if this uh, phase mismatch is uh, uh, zero we find a maximum efficiency and its maximum power transfer if it is non-zero so we will have uh, oscillating uh, efficiency actually the efficiency goes up at some uh, uh, point and it goes down and uh, Yeah, so this is the expression and now let's implement this in MATLAB in a bit simplified uh, expression. Actually, I don't want to plug these uh, terms and I just want because these all are constant and their product is also constant. Yeah, so in the MATLAB implementation, I, I don't want to include this component here or this coefficient here and uh, just implement d square when delta k is zero and uh, d square into sink uh, square of delta k z over two uh, when delta k is different from zero and just observe let's observe the uh, when it is matched and uh, the efficiency when it is match it and uh, when it has mismatch okay now let's go to uh, MATLAB all right now let's see the MATLAB implementation of uh, the efficiency so the first thing is to define uh, delta k so here we will see two uh, versions of delta k. One is when it is zero and when it is non-zero. I have just given here pi by 20 as uh, a typical value. And now let's define here uh, definition of v between zero and 24 and uh, 1000 sample points. And then uh, efficiency when delta k is zero. That is, as you can see here, here is the mathematical expression. It is z square, yeah. So in MATLAB, z square. And the efficiency when uh, delta k is non zero, or when it is non zero, it is z square sinc delta k z by 2 the whole square. Here we have it. Now let's see the plot of these two uh, eta expressions or uh, efficiency expressions. One is z versus eta when delta k is zero, and uh, another when uh, z versus uh, eta or efficiency when uh, uh, delta k is non zero. All right, so this is on uh, uh, formatting the plot. Okay, run it. It is running. It is busy. So okay. Well, uh, all right. So as you can see here and uh, on the legend, the blue curve, this curve, the one which is exponentially or uh, rising in quadratic fashion is efficiency for delta k is equal to zero. That is when phase matching is met. Mm -hmm. So efficiency grows 
implies that uh, there is maximum power transfer and the reddish curve or the red curve shows us efficiency when delta k is uh, different from zero all right so as you can see here the uh, efficiency goes up and it goes down that is it oscillates okay and that is what we don't want to happen and we only want to see uh, a growing efficiency okay uh, in next video we will see uh, how to uh, satisfy the phase matching condition but with uh, dispersion relations thank you for watching the video